Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with a very interesting Hasbro figure. I've actually had many requests recently for different reviews of Hasbro Jurassic World figures. I don't know if it's just like nostalgia or if it's maybe because the figures are so terrible that people just want to see reviews of them, or maybe because most people just kind of ignored the line for the most part when it came out, so more reviews of these, I guess, could be a good thing. But this time we've got the Ceratosaurus, and this is actually one of very few figures that I did purchase when the figures originally came out. And in fact, this is the one that I purchased. I never actually took it out of the packaging or anything. I only bought it because I am a massive fan of Ceratosaurus, and at the time... This was the only version of a Jurassic Park 3 Ceratosaurus that was available. So, you know, even though it's not really as nice as what we get nowadays, for the time, I was kind of excited about the release of this one, even though, again, looking back at it, it's pretty ugly. But this is an electronic sort of a figure. You can see it has a growling action and also, I think, lights up. This one, I believe the batteries have now died in, potentially. I never unfortunately took them out, which is not a good thing. I need to get those out of there. But uh, you can see again the box art for the time was kind of fun. I can definitely say that. They did at least a decent job on the box art for the figures. And then if we take a look here at the back, you can see the figure in kind of like a display of the action feature and everything going on for it, as well as the authentic Jurassic World logo right there. And again, I do still like that they were including the Jurassic World stamp instead of the JP stamp, but they were still including that stamp on there. That's one thing Mattel doesn't do, which I would actually like if they did. But again, this is my in-box version. I'm not, of course, going to take it out of the box. I'm going to continue to keep it in the box, but since I had one in the box, I figured it would be fun to show it to you guys and let you see the actual box art. But here is another one that I have that is out of the packaging. So this is the one that we will actually review. But you can see again, out of the packaging, it doesn't look a whole lot better. And in fact, when you turn it around, of course, you are met with those ugly Hasbro screw holes, as well as an area here in the stomach, so that the dinosaur could in fact make its noise. We do have that area there that's also a little bit ugly. But again, like I said, one of the very few dinosaurs from the Jurassic World line that I did actually purchase when it came out, so might as well get a review up for it, I guess. So as always, let's jump to a closer look and we'll check it out from there. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Ceratosaurus, you can see the overall appearance to it looking like a Jurassic Park 3 Ceratosaurus isn't really there, but it kind of is. And I don't know how to explain that any better than it sort of looks like it, but at the same time, I really don't think Hasbro was too worried about screen accuracy, and you'll see that through the entire line from Jurassic World. They didn't really care when it comes to actually giving you a dinosaur that looks like it does on screen, but one thing they did actually get right about this one at the very least is the fact that we only really have like this one big horn on the snout. There's not much else on the Jurassic World, or I should say Jurassic Park 3 version of the Ceratosaurus when it comes to the horn. You know, you basically just have like that one horn up there and uh, they did at least get that right. But you can see we've got some reddish tones here in the face. You also have the white that kind of runs along the, uh, you know, upper jaw here. And that's actually something you kind of see like a striping effect on the JP3 Ceratosaurus. So I'm kind of surprised that Hasbro actually got that right on their figure, even though it's not exactly perfect. But they did at least attempt to apply that appearance to the dinosaur so I do have to at least give them a little bit of props for that but the skin texture is kind of jumbled doesn't really look that great it also doesn't look that crisp and is a little bit muted in most areas we can see the nostrils right there the eyes I will say are painted pretty nicely there's like a black that sort of outlines the eye we've got a yellow and then we also have a black pupil and it even looks like maybe there's a white spot there to kind of give it a little bit of eye shine rather than actually using a gloss coat like we see nowadays from Mattel but I do have to give Hasbro props. I think the paintwork for the eyes of many of their figures is actually better than what we see for Mattel. And I hate to say that, but the paintwork for the eyes of a lot of the Hasbro figures looked pretty decent. You know, they put a little bit more into the paintwork of the eyes than what we usually get from Mattel, which is often like lacking pupils at all or misplaced eyes and stuff. For the most part, the Hasbro eyes are pretty decent. But then when you move down here into the mouth, look at those teeth. Man, they're terrible. Absolutely awful. 
probably some of the ugliest teeth I've ever seen on a dinosaur figure in general. The teeth on the lower jaw you almost don't even notice. Like it almost doesn't even look like it has teeth down there because they're so small. They're all sculpted together, all jumbled in there. It's also a light similar tone to what you see for the lower jaw. It's only slightly different in tone of color to what you see in the lower jaw so it's hard to even pick up on them but again the teeth on the upper side are a good bit larger but they're all sculpted together and not even like sculpted nicely together they're almost not even possible to distinguish a tooth from another tooth so very very ugly when it comes to the teeth in the inside of the mouth and I consistently always felt like that was the ugliest area of this figure you can see the tongue is sculpted in there and that's okay looking you know it's definitely not terrible and you can see we have a purplish tone for the inside of the mouth but once you actually lead up to the top of the inside of the mouth there's just nothing really going on in there so they didn't even make an effort to give you any amount of detail up there you do have an articulated jaw which is nice i guess and uh, that's part of the action feature but as you move back here toward the neck you start to see the lighter tones of the ceratosaurus pick up you can also see that we get this like black patterning as well as the red and it sort of replicates the appearance of a jurassic park 3 ceratosaurus i mean tones of color wise yeah sure i think they did a pretty decent job as far as capturing the likeness of the jp3 ceratosaurus but when it comes to the actual patterning and everything not so much and that's one thing is it's kind of weird because for for the most part Hasbro would usually at least when you look back to like the Jurassic Park 3 line and stuff they would usually put a decent amount of paintwork into their figures so I'm surprised that they didn't really capture the likeness of the dinosaur at least as far as the paintwork anyway sculpt wise I'm not surprised at all as you move down here you can see the arms are sculpted out here we've got the elbow on the back you can also see some okay skin texture as you move down the fingernails are kind of painted but you can see they like just barely gave it any sort of paintwork for that area it also doesn't really have much in the way of like actual claws they're just kind of tiny little like bumps on the end of the fingers which is also pretty weird there is articulation in the arms, which you can see works okay. It's not too bad, definitely a little bit on the smoother side. As you lead back into the stomach region, you do have an area here of like dino damage. You can see a little bit of a translucency to the uh, bloody sort of areas. And that's because I think it lights up, if I remember correctly, which we will do here in just a little bit. You can kind of see the ribs sort of painted out here, but not really all that nicely. And the button is very obvious. It's not like it's hidden well at all. The seam is super obvious as you move around. As you continue to lead along the back, you can see some small ridges following along the spinal column of the dinosaur. And then you can see the red kind of follows the back rather than running down here onto the side. And in fact, there's not really much in the way of color moving down here into the side except for of course the dino damage area as you lead back you have a little bit more of the black showing up here and there you can see it kind of run down into the thigh just briefly and as you move down the leg I would say that the leg sports probably the nicest detailing on the dinosaur as a whole potentially as you can see a good bit of like creasing and everything kind of cracks and crevices to the skin moving down you've got a decently sculpted calf muscle the knee is present but not super obvious and as you move down into the foot sculpt you've got some scoots moving down the toes the nails are painted with a nice glossy black and the dew claws are also painted so i mean i do have to give them props there as well at least they do one thing better than mattel and that's actually painting the nails it seems like on at least most if not all of their figures but most for sure it seems but as you move into the tail you can very clearly see that in typical mattel fashion although i guess maybe mattel's taking a page out of hasbro's book here because hasbro came first with the jurassic world line but you can see the paint tapers off as you lead out into the tail and then the rest of the tail doesn't feature any paintwork at all it also has a very short tail which you can see definitely way too short it has a pretty dramatic curve as it leads down as well you can see the skin detail does look fairly decent moving out onto the tail it doesn't look terrible it's kind of similar i would say to most of the body where it looks okay but just not really anything to rave about you can see the ridges following along the tail though moving out as well and then if we turn the figure around you can now see the screw holes first of all the dinosaur does have its head facing away from us there is no articulation in the neck at all so uh no 
poseability in that area, but it is posed with its head facing away from us. We do have two ugly screw holes right here. As we continue to move down, the stomach region of the dinosaur looks really bare on this side. We do have that area here for the uh, sound to escape from, but this side has the whole dino damage thing going on, whereas this side just looks super, super bare and awkward because the red paint doesn't lead down into the side of the dinosaur or anything. So definitely giving it a bit of an awkward look. We do, of course, have articulation in the arm again, like we saw on the initial side, and we do have articulation in the legs. But if you look here, like that's all you really get when it comes to this leg. That just tiny little bit of articulation, which is pretty bad. And then you can see pretty much the same thing going on for the articulation over here as well. You do have articulation in the tail that moves up and down, but that activates the action feature, so we won't do that quite yet. But as you lead down, you can see the foot and everything looks pretty much the same over here. It is taking a step forward, so there's a bit of a different look to it on this side compared to the initial side. I don't know if this... You see it on the arm and here. I don't know if that's actual paintwork that was on the dinosaur to begin with or if that's just something that was added on by whoever owned this before I grabbed it. I think I got this one in a lot or something at some point. But as you lead back, you also have a very ugly stamp here on the side, the CE stamp. I don't know why it's placed right there. It's at least almost, you know, not visible, but when you get close, you can definitely see it. But then you lead out again with the tail now curving away from us. So far and away, oh, you also have two more screw holes right there, but far and away, it's not a great Ceratosaurus, and it's probably one of the ugliest Ceratosaurus in my collection, but at the time, I was at least excited for a JP3 Ceratosaurus of some kind. Now, when it comes to the sounds and all of that fun stuff, let's Let's go ahead and push the button. I'm surprised at how bad that sound actually sounds like. It's really kind of fuzzy and not good. I don't remember if they all sounded that bad. Maybe that's all we had going on as far as the sounds back in the day. But I remember the Kenner figure sounding a good bit better than that. But listen to it again. I don't know if maybe this guy's got something wrong with him or... If that's really how the sounds, you know, were back then, but that does not sound very good. At least it sounds like it could potentially be a Ceratosaurus noise. Eh, kinda. Doesn't really sound like the T-Rex or anything, which is a plus, but you could obviously see that it does light up. Then we have the action feature of the tail, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there is a T-Rex noise on the Ceratosaurus, and you can very clearly hear it has a T-Rex roar and then a chomping sound because it is chomping, although the chomp sounds way too late because the mouth is obviously closed far before that ever occurs. So let's do it again. Oh, actually, once you push it down, it doesn't activate until you let it go. So... Not so great. Oh, there it goes. Not so great as far as that goes. I don't think they uh, did too great of a job there. But as far as a size for the Ceratosaurus, lengthwise, you were looking at about nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. And the highest point would probably actually be the tail. But here to the tip of the horn, just shy of three and three quarter inches or around nine and a half centimeters. And then to the top of the tail, you were looking at closing in on three and three quarter inches or nine and a half centimeters. So even though they look actually like they would be uh, a little bit different in height, they are actually very similar as far as at least the horn and the tail. But for a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the attack pack, Colovosaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the collect a human being next to our Hasbro Ceratosaurus. And you can see it's not huge, but it's not tiny. Definitely smaller than what you would normally get for a Ceratosaurus nowadays. But also, again, it's like... I would say like a small, medium-sized figure. We've also got a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus stepping in next to the Ceratosaurus for yet another comparison. And then we've got a Mattel Ceratosaurus, which you can very clearly see is a good bit larger than the Hasbro version. It's also so much nicer than the Hasbro version. Like, it's like night and day when looking at these two figures next to each other. The only difference is, again, Hasbro at least painted the nails, but sculpt-wise, the uh, Mattel version is so much better. I would also say, uh, paint-wise, even though this isn't exactly the JP3 variant 
but paint wise it also looks better yeah the uh hasbro version has a little bit more paint running out onto the tail but the overall patterning and everything just looks a lot better on the mattel version and then we've also got the mattel hammond collection version of the ceratosaurus next to the hasbro version and again the uh Hammond collection version is just like absolutely incredible compared to the Hasbro version which even looking back at that Hammond collection version there definitely could have been some improvements now that I look at it it could have used the white coloration they're striping on the face and uh, also the uh, tail could have been a little bit longer but obviously the Mattel Hammond collection version just completely destroys the Hasbro version but you can see also is a good bit larger overall so this Hasbro electronic Jurassic World Ceratosaurus is pretty ugly but at least when it comes to the Hasbro line I would honestly say it's probably one of their better figures they released and uh, I would also say that that kind of gives you an idea as far as how that line went overall because the figure itself looks pretty, not terrible, but ugly for sure. The uh, sculpt and fine detail just isn't there the way it probably should be. And the way I feel like Hasbro could, you know, create skin texture and everything. Like, I definitely feel like they could do better than what they did here. Overall, I feel like the entire Jurassic World line from Hasbro was very lackluster, which is one of the reasons why everybody hated it so much. But... In most of the areas of the figures, they are very poorly done, and the same can be said for the Ceratosaurus. Again, the skin texture just doesn't really look that great. It doesn't look terrible, and I definitely have seen worse on other figures in the Hasbro line, but it overall just doesn't look all that good. Looks a little bit muted in certain areas, a little bit jumbled, I would say. The teeth are absolutely disgustingly atrocious. They look horrible. I don't know that I've ever seen worse teeth on a dinosaur figure ever. The paintwork of it looks okay, because, I mean, it kind of captures the tones of color at the very least, but... It's not really that great either, also a bit on the lackluster side, especially when you look at the right side of the dinosaur and the paint not running down into the stomach at all kind of gives it a little bit of a naked look and feel. The dino damage area is kind of cool because it's kind of like a throwback to the older figures, but also not really that great. I'm not a big fan of the light up aspect of the figure as well, but it's okay, I mean it works fairly decent the sound though sounds rough i don't know again like i said i don't know if it's just this one or if it always sounded that bad but it does not sound very good on this figure and then you also have the action feature which allows you to chomp the jaws and move the tail works okay but the sound doesn't really activate at what i would expect to be the right time and it also has just a generic kind of jurassic park t-rex roar which is also not a good thing but uh, at least it has an action feature, I guess. So overall, it is definitely not a good figure. Definitely not a figure that I would suggest going out and grabbing. I would say grab one of the Mattel ones for sure over this one. But if you are like me and you really want to complete your Hasbro Jurassic World collection, then yeah, sure, I guess you could grab it. Because when it comes to the Hasbro line, it's probably, sadly to say, one of the better figures they released, but still a pretty terrible figure overall. So if you are interested, again, your best bet would be to check eBay. That's usually where you can find them. And since it's not a highly desired figure, especially with so many Jurassic Park 3 style Ceratosaurus out from Mattel, it shouldn't cost too much to grab one. And of course, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.